Also, I saw a preview for Man of Steel when I was watching Batman. And I found the old, I found the new Superman movie, Superman Returns. I remember watching it for the first time and I thought, wow, this is really cool. Especially the plane scene where he's stopping the plane from falling on the, all the people at the baseball game. I thought that was just like, like I was holding my breath the whole time. It was awesome. Then I watched it a second time and then I thought, wow, this is really slow. So, in a way, I'm glad that they're rebooting the reboot. Because the character is so good, you don't want to just lose the character, right? And I hope that the bad guy is more than just Lex Luthor. Because although that's his arch nemesis, it's fun to see him fight against another enemy that is otherworldly and that they're just engaging in intergalactic battles where you know that only they can fight each other and they can throw each other against buildings and destroy a lot of stuff and it looks awesome. That's the kind of Superman that I like to see. I forget which one it was, but there was a Superman movie where he was fighting himself. This is one of the old Christopher Reeves movies. I forget what it was called, but that was, uh, that was entertaining. Because just imagine a Superman versus Superman fight. Getting there, getting there. Get this little turret here. All right, let's talk about the new Batman movie, Dark Knight Rises. It's been out for a good week and a half so far. It has made close to $300 million at the box office domestically, meaning North America. and over half a million worldwide so far. See now, I like it when movies that I like are really successful, because that just means that they're gonna make more of them. Do I think that they're done with the Batman franchise? Absolutely not, I think that they will continue it. But I think that Christopher Nolan will continue it. No, I don't think he will. I think that this is his uh, um, this is his masterpiece and that he has nothing more to add to it. It's a trilogy, he has finished his trilogy and he's, for all intents and purposes, he's good. He never has to do anything regarding it again. Would I be sad if they did continue the Batman franchise with Christopher Nolan making more Batman movies? No, I would not be sad. I would welcome them. You know how when people say that when a good movie is made and you you don't want to tamper with it, you don't want to make any other movies about it or similar to it just because the original was so good you don't want to ruin it. But then movies nowadays, a lot of them are franchised and the movies are awesome, not just the first one. So when I think of that, I think of uh, I think of Harry Potter, actually. And to me, Harry Potter's are good movies. And it didn't matter that they kept on going and making movies after each book. It was uh, really enjoyable to me.
It's like the Lord of the Rings, right? You're, you're going to want to make multiple movies. And uh, Back in the old days, when I say old days, I mean like 20, 30 years ago, when I used to make uh, sequels, they were always lower budget, and they were never as good as the first one because I guess Hollywood Studios didn't believe that they could make as much money and their whole intention with the whole thing, the whole sequel idea was to milk the franchise as much as possible for as much money. It was never the original intent to make multiple movies and to plan it out from the beginning. Any sequels were an afterthought of, well, hey, the first movie was successful, let's make a second, we can make some more money with this, let's milk it. Nowadays, they plan it out from the beginning, like Lord of the Rings, all three movies were planned. Now, I say this uh, in general, and this is my opinion, of course, and I think it's uh, more accurate than how it used to be. Because I'm sure that there's some movies that they make that it could be made into a trilogy, but it wasn't originally intended to be made into a trilogy, and then as an afterthought, they figured that they would continue the franchise because the first one was successful, so they make additional movies just as good caliber and quality as the first movie. And that's perfectly fine because they put the same amount of budget, same amount of effort into it. Pretty sure that a lot of the movies that aren't I'm laughing at the fact that he got the last little bit out at the end. I don't know where my thought was going there and then it was interrupted by a wog. So um, that thought's lost forever. I don't even think it was meant to be verbalized anyway. Okay, getting closer with this thing. I don't know when I started it. Okay. Sorry guys, not really talking too much. Okay, I'm gonna read some comments from the video that I posted showing the six flyers and my army. So this is in response to that video. I read a couple of the comments here after I get the back of this jet engine painted up. Give me five seconds. Five seconds. Cinco segundos. Segundo? Denzi Tons says, I tried that for my Blood Angels and it looked seriously cool. That was probably in response to another comment that I need to click on the next page link in order to view. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for the comment from above that. Daten Chu. Awesome Army Dave, I wouldn't recommend Tactical Marines. You can always ally with Space Wolves. You need an HQ and a Troop Choice. Nobody has a better plus one HQ plus one Troop Choice combo for the points than Space Wolves. A Room Priest with Presence, prescience, pre-science, uh, I, I'm not reading right, and times 10 gray hunters with dual plasma guns, wolf standard mark of the wolf and cost 285 points, and will outshoot anything that will, at that point, cost. They had the added ability to take the charge without getting wiped. Because they have counter charge, or why?
<laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna respond to the comment. I, I just kind of read it and then I continued painting, so I got distracted by the painting. But let me respond to the comment. If that is true, then what I need to do is first test out this theory by deploying Paul's Space Wolves, that exact combination of models with my Blood Angel army as a detached allied detachment. That doesn't sound right. Now is it an attachment or detachment? Because if you say detachment, it kind of doesn't make sense because how's that a... It's an attachment to the army, right? A group of guys is an attachment, but why do you say detachment? If it is detached. So I'm not actually sure which one it is offhand without looking in the rule book. And I don't want to look in the rule book right now because I'm right in the middle of painting this jet engine. And I don't want to interrupt the painting. It's not good to interrupt the painting. That's actually a really good suggestion. I've never thought of using Space Wolves as an allied detachment. I thought of Imperial Guard. Never really did continue that Batman uh, discussion. I saw Batman three times. First time I saw it, I thought, wow, there wasn't really a whole lot of Batman action in that. I kind of wanted more Batman action. Just as a spoiler alert, for those who haven't seen it that I plan on seeing it, I am going to talk about this movie more in depth than I did Spider-Man. How much time I have the camera here? 26 minutes. Okay, yeah, I got time to really talk about this. So, this will be a spoiler. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. So, you might want to stop the vlog here if you don't want things to be spoiled. But. First time I saw it. My initial thoughts were those. Needed more Batman action. And it was actually, it was difficult to understand Bane. He, I had to strain to understand him. Because he spoke with an accent. Not sure where his accent's from. The actor is British, but I don't think the Bane character is British. else. 